A lot of progress has been made over the years to open up opportunities and to grow the economy. In this regard, the South African economy has expanded by 83% over the past 19 years. National income per capita has increased from 27,500 in 1993 to 38,500 in 2012, an increase of 40%. Disposal income per capita of households has increased by 43% which is just over 1.9%, which is just over, which in itself <clears throat> is a development that we can see. The total employment has increased by more than 3.5 3 million since 1994. As a result of these and the other developments, resulting from progressive government policies, there has been an impressive growth of the black middle class. South Africa's black middle class has more than doubled over the last eight years, growing from 1.7 million South Africans in 2004 to an estimated 4.5 2 million in 2012. Let me hasten to add, however, that while we have made strides with regards to black economic empowerment and the growth of a black middle class, we are still faced by unacceptable levels of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. The average annual African household income is 60,613 rand, and of the white households stands at 365,164 rand, indicating the enormous work we must still do to bridge the gap at the levels of the poor and the working class. With regards to progress in terms of BEE transactions, according to our national treasury, over 600 billion rand in BEE transactions have been recorded since 1995. According to Anderson Young, since 1995, there have been more than 1,500 publicly announced BEE ownership transactions worth at least 533 billion rand. Most of the transactions involved JSC listed, company, listed companies. Of concern, is that black participation in the economy continues to involve share ownership schemes in the main. In addition, gross black ownership of South African assets on the JSC was equivalent to only 6.8% by 2010, and there has been minimal progress since then. More importantly, we are yet to see the growth of black industrialists, despite government's aggressive focus on boosting the manufacturing sectors. The day we see factories all over the country owned by black entrepreneurs taking advantage of our industrial policy action 
plan, we will be moving towards achieving the triple B double E goals. In the amendment bill, which drew broad support across a number of parties in the National Assembly, we've we introduced a new statutory definition of fronting. We've introduced that because that can be a touchstone against which to judge fronting transactions. And we've introduced a new office, a commissioner, that will deal with complaints about BE fronting and uh, can attempt to resolve them, but in the end of the day, if there's no resolution, uh, can take these uh, through uh, the court processes uh, for prosecution. We've also introduced in the bill uh, uh, some regulation of the verification agency. Uh, and also of the alignment of the uh, charters which have existed in a number of sectors with the BE codes. And that bill, as I indicated, has passed through the National Assembly. The National Council of Provinces, according to my information, have now received mandates from each of the provinces. They will be meeting in the committee next week to receive those mandates, whereafter the bill will go to the plenary session of the National Council of Provinces, and we have no doubt that that uh, amendment bill will become uh, uh, in uh, force of law uh, before the end of this administration. The other thing which we've done is we've looked at the codes of good practice. And we found that in the codes of good practice, there were seven categories of broad economic empowerment that were provided for. And we found that although people could earn points, there were two things. One is, Many players were not earning points in some of the most important economic categories. And the second one was it was actually quite easy to earn a point uh, or two uh, without doing anything very substantial. And so what we've done is we've rejigged the codes. We've rejigged the codes, first of all, by reducing the number of categories from seven to five. And we've also indicated within some of those, which we think are priority categories, we will now require a sub-minimum performance. One of those categories which we've combined and which we've put in as a sub-minimum is what's now called supplier and enterprise development. There were previously two categories. Because one of the very important things that we need to do if we are to have an economy which is on the track to inclusive growth is we need to have a strong symbiotic relationship between big and small companies. We see that in successful emerging economies across the world. We see big companies want good suppliers. They go out, they work with the suppliers. They uh, encourage skills development and capacity building among their suppliers. And in that way, they empower those suppliers. You can already earn points for that. We're now saying you actually need to earn a certain proportion of points in that particular category uh, as a sub-minimum. If there is not a sub-minimum performance in these areas, you will go down one place on your overall scorecard. If you were three, you will go down to four. That's what we are saying. 